Hallelujah. Those of you who were with us last week, um, we began to talk about gifts from the Father and what God has given us. If you were not here, we came from the scripture out of Luke chapter 15, where we talked about the prodigal son. And I mean, how many of you know about the prodigal son? Amen. Just say amen. amen. Um, the prodigal son asks his father for his, uh, all his inheritance, the things that belong to him. Um, and how many of you know he just gave him the stuff that was in his bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> gave him some money that he had. So that was the prodigal son working. And um, the prodigal son, the Bible says that the prodigal son went out and came back. Um, and when he came back, he said, Lord, you know, um, I've sinned against you and I've sinned against, you know, man. He says, I'm not worthy to be called a son. Um, that was a place of repentance that he was in. And his father made a statement at that particular time. In verse 22, his father, it says, but his father said to his servants, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. So what I began to tell you was about the father who is actually the father God. But God gives us three things in life. And he brings us these three things based on who we are in him. Uh, the first was a robe. The second was a ring. The third was sandals. The robe represented identity. Amen. The ring represented authority. And the sandals represented destiny. Okay. In that order. Okay. You have to have identity before you can move in authority. You have to have authority before you can find destiny. So what we do, we do a disservice to our church. We do a disservice to our children when we raise them up and we don't teach them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord because they go out and we give them the authority of world system, but we don't give them the authority of Christ. Uh, when they don't have the authority of Christ, then part of the problem that they run into is that they go out and they try to use world system to get places and it doesn't work for them. Uh, been there, done that. And it's not until we find our way back and find the truth of walking in identity that we can actually grow in the things of the Lord. So last week we talked a little bit about identity, what identity was and what it was not. Um, we talked about you having um, yourself identified as a royal member of the household of God. Um, how you know that you belong to the Lord and that should be the first place that you go to to understand that you have identity. Uh, when you try to substitute your identity with titles, um, with anything of that nature, even with money, um, if you give someone money, you can find out what they do with it. Like, for instance, some people, you give them money, they'll go out and they'll buy a brand new car so they can flash. The car becomes their identity. Somebody say false identity. So we, we begin to do things and we begin to attach to ourselves the wrong identity as opposed to being known as a person in Christ. Because in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. And some people don't want to be known as a Christian. Uh, those days are over. You got, you got to, as they say, you got to man up. You got to be who you're supposed to be. You have to understand what your identity is. Now, after getting identity, we'll talk a little bit today, just very shortly, about authority. Okay, because I'm just going to just do overview. I could literally write a book on all of this. Um, but authority only comes when you can actually walk in identity. All right? Um, because you have to represent. Um, 
When your identity is lost, there's something else that gets lost. It's called grace. Grace is only given in proportion to your identity. So if you see yourself small, you're going to have small grace. If you see yourself royal, you're going to have royal grace. So grace will come to you based on how you identify yourself. So if you don't think that you can move anywhere or do anything, then your, your grace is going to be small. But if your identity says, I'm blessed, I'm chosen, okay? I'm the head and not the tail. I am healed. Then grace can come. But grace can't come if the identity does not attract the grace. Are you hearing me today? So you have to begin to assess your life and look at what you go after. If your identity is him, I ain't talking about Jesus, you lost already because he can't bring you anything. If your identity is her, you've lost already because they can't bring you anything. But if your identity becomes Jesus, how many of you know you went all the way around? Because only God can give grace. It's unmerited, okay? You don't earn grace. God will give it based on how you walk out your righteousness. So what if we choose not to walk out righteousness? Then that says you don't get much grace because you don't identify with righteousness. But as you identify with righteousness and walk in, in, in righteousness and walk in forgiveness, walk in the grace of God, in the glory of God, as you walk in that, then you're going to get something called grace. When it comes to authority, authority, authority has all to do with what comes out of your mouth. Are y'all there? I'll talk about it in a minute, but let me just say this. If you're murmuring and complaining, that ain't going to move God. It will not move him to, or change his heart towards you. He knows that you are to get things, but you're under tutors and governors until an appointed time. And if you're murmuring and complaining, he's going to say, no, the authority's not there. God knows not to give authority to people who are immature. Amen? So God wants to give authority to those who are growing in him, who are moving in him. No parent will give them, their kids keys to a car when they are not mature. Denise and I received a call yesterday from uh, a young lady and um, um, the son that, they, that she raised in the church uh, went off to college, come back with tattoos, all right, and he got nothing but a C average while him and his best friend broke up because uh, they've been fighting over marijuana. What happened? You raise them up. But sometimes we release authority too early because the identity is not there. Are you there? It doesn't matter that the world says at 16 you can get your license. I'm paying the insurance, son. It doesn't matter what the world says. You can't, you, you can't even wash your clothes, wash the dishes. You don't have no responsibility behind you. Why in the world should I let you drive my car? I know what the world say, but I know what I say too. Are you there? And how many of you know a parent can trump world system? I'm, I ain't. I ain't trying to be down on y'all kids. I'm just telling you, you're going to be a parent one day. You got to know you trump world system. Right. It's important for us to understand that we walk in a level of 
obedience to God's word, which is authority. And he will identify with us as we begin to walk in that. Amen. So let me give you a few scriptures today before I let you go. Um, Isaiah chapter 9. Go for it, Rodney. Um, verse 6. For unto us, come on everybody, talk back to me today. Unto us, a who is born? Okay. Unto us, a son. All right, so you got a child and a son. What's the difference between the two? Maturity. Okay? Sons are mature. Okay? Children are not. Even in the New Testament, it tells us in Romans chapter 8, it says, it talks about children who bear witness with their father. And then it says, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. Okay? Sons are led. They walk in a level of obedience. So there's a difference between the two. And the government, look at this, and the government, everybody say authority, authority. will be upon his shoulder. Yep. And in his, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Come on, everybody. Who? And? Man. This gets even better. Verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be, come on, no, no end. I love this. He's going to constantly grow in peace, all right? And it also says here that he's, it, his authority is just going to continue to grow, all right? Who's he talking about? Who's he talking about? Jesus. Who's he talking about? Uh, Y'all can say it. You get, we can all say it. Who's he talking about? Jesus. <laughs> Listen, he's not only talking about Jesus, he's talking about you. He's talking about your growth patterns, what's about to come out of you. So he says, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts. I wondered why they put the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Well, whenever you see the term the Lord of hosts, it's the Lord who fight my battles. Okay? God says, listen, I'm always going to fight your battles. We, he knew the devil was rebellious. And just because Jesus died, he wasn't trying to sit down. He still was trying to take y'all. But how many know he can't? So God says, my zeal will take care of this. I, that's, that's my whole mission. I'm going to fight your battle. So today, just, just for if you need a, a topic, who's who in the kingdom of God? Who's who? Everybody say, who's who? Who's who? Father, we, def we thank you for today. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace. Open our ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't want to just give y'all a message. You know, I'm, I'm just tired of those days. I need, I need change because I can't go but so far if you don't go but so far. All of us got to go like this, okay? Every single one of us. And I've committed my, my total sacrifice to moving in the things that God wants us to move in. Amen? Amen. So... Here, Jesus sacrificed everything that he had, as Apostle Denise was talking earlier, so that we could have a better life. So I need to tell you where we're going with all of this. First, we're talking about who's who in the kingdom of God. Let me take the word kingdom, okay, because we hear that a lot, and a lot of times people don't understand the word kingdom. In the simplest form, it's the king's dominion. Okay, it's where he rules and reigns in the simplest form. Let me give you one definition that you can find probably in Webster or, or one of those places. A politically organized community that is governed by a monarch. A monarch is a king. In other words, only one voice, many echoes. What he says, go. All right? How many of you know your homes are built like monarchs. Don't say, well, his husband and wife. No, they won. 
They're supposed to be anyway. Okay. I say it. But why, Mom? Because I said so. You ain't got to give no other explanation. Anybody ever heard that from their parent? Just say amen. amen. Okay. Why? Because they said so. They don't have to say anything else. I said so. My house, I can say it. That's what, because I can rule it. Everybody get it? Okay, okay. In a kingdom, it's, it's in a realm where someone is dominant. Okay, you don't get to compete. All right, they're dominant, okay. It's where the king's word becomes law. Are you there? If mama or daddy said, be in the house by 10 o'clock, what does that mean? Talk to me, y'all. Come on. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't get to decide what you want. Uh, you, you can't text. You can't do anything else, you know, and I was talking uh, to a young man yesterday about, you know, just following rules and everything, and we were talking about coming home, and he said, this is what he said to me, he said, my dad used to say, you can come in anytime you want, but this door gets locked at 10 o'clock and does not open till I get up in the morning. So he told me he challenged that one day. And he ended up climbing up a tree to get up on the roof to try to get through his window, which he made it successfully, he said. But after that happened, he, he, he decided he ain't going to never do it again. <laughs> it was detrimental to his safety. Uh, are are y'all with me today? So when, when you are a king, you, you set a rule and the rule becomes law. All right. So in the scriptures, you hear the word kingdom all the time. OK, because I need you all to understand who's who in the kingdom of God. So you hear two terms, kingdom of heaven. And then you hear the other term, which is kingdom of God. OK, so you have the kingdom of heaven and you have the kingdom of God. And a lot of times we like to use them interchangeably, thinking they're the same thing. Well, next time you read through the New Testament, they're not the same thing. Okay, and I want to make sure that everybody understands the kingdoms as they are. The kingdom of heaven includes the earth and the heavens. Okay, and all that is in it. Now, if that's the kingdom of heaven, how many of you know in the kingdom of heaven is even Satan? Okay. Not everything in the kingdom of heaven is under God's authority, but it is under his lordship. Here's what I'm saying to you. He can change it at any time, but he lets it be. Y'all still there? But in the kingdom of God, that is where you find his word and his word is obeyed. So when you say the kingdom of God is here, that means somebody's following the word. You can stand at any time and speak to the darkness at any time and say, oh no, the kingdom of God is here. Not the kingdom of heaven, but it's the kingdom of God. Are you there? The kingdom of heaven has always been But the kingdom of God was not established until Jesus Christ came. Everybody follow me so far. Okay. So when Jesus sat and he was talking to his disciples, he was giving them the principles of prayer. Y'all heard it before. He said, our father, which. Okay. We're done. Holy is thy name or hallowed be thy name. Thy. Thy. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Okay. So we know that. That's Matthew 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. All right? So everybody's there. We got that. 
He talks about, he opens that prayer with the kingdom. He closes it with the kingdom. Okay? So he says, I want your will to be done. In other words, I want the kingdom of God to become, I want the kingdom of heaven to become the kingdom of God. Everybody follow me so far. Okay? All right? So why do we have parents? So they can bring us into the kingdom of God. I mean, I have three children, and just because they're off on their own, it doesn't stop me from being dad. I still get to speak the kingdom over their lives. I want to speak it in peace and joy. Okay? If I have to speak in correction, I'll do that too. And that goes something like, well, you know the word says. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. Because they're old enough to grow and do whatever they need to do. But I can at least lay the word on. Right? All right? And then I can go pray. And I can take authority over the Nelson clan. Because now, now, we, now we're going to move from identity. Now we're going to move into authority. Are, are y'all with me today? All right. All right? So he closes this prayer. The Lord's Prayer, as they call it. For yours is the kingdom and the, and the, how long? In other words, God says, when I speak, not only do I show up in identity, but I show up in power, authority. Okay, that word is dunamis. Okay, okay. And my glory shows up. That means whatever I have designed and that's walking with me, it comes to the fullness of who it is, destiny. Okay? In other words, the destiny is coming out too. So now you got the robe, the ring, and uh, the sandals just pushing forward. All right? So he says, I'm pulling it out of you. I'm bringing it to you. And listen, when my word going to show up, this is exactly what's going to happen. All right? Why? Because they're part of the kingdom. So... God's kingdom will only be established based on his authority. So if his word is not there, then there is no authority, and therefore there is no kingdom. So what has God done? God has taken the church and said, y'all can't stay here. Y'all got to go. I'm going to send you into the school system. I'm going to send you into government. I'm going to send you into business. I'm going to send you into community. I'm going to send you into families. And wherever I send you is going to be up to you to establish my kingdom. You have to do it the way the Spirit is going to show you. Now, The law in the Old Testament was written on tablets. But in the New Testament, it says that the law is written on your heart. And that means the Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you into what to do where you are. Man, I'm getting chills up here. This is good stuff. Does everybody follow what I'm saying to you? So when you bring the kingdom to where you are, not everybody's going to like you bringing the kingdom. And the Holy Spirit has to give you the strategy of how to bring the kingdom in. Sometimes things are going to raise up against you, as the apostle said. But in your suffering, you're literally rooting out the kingdom of darkness, and you're bringing the kingdom of God to light. Everybody follow me today? All right, so when you're around your, your friends and your friends like to cuss around you, listen, you ought to shut that down. You ought, why should I shut it down? Simply because you need to say to them, you know, I love you. <clears throat> you mean a lot to me. We've been, we, we went through a lot. We've been growing up, blah, blah, blah. You know, you've been my homie, you know, whatever you call it today. You know, my, my bro, you know, all that. You know, so, but... I'm a born-again Christian, and you hurt my heart when you start talking that kind of language. A lot of people know it, because when they start talking that language, and they know you a born-again Christian, you ain't even said it, what do they say? Excuse me. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. You know, why? Simply because they already feel the atmosphere of the kingdom of God pressing in. Are, are y'all there? So when you walk, you got to walk with identity. No, we won't do that. No, I'm not going to do that. Hey, Kev, you want to drink? No, we don't do that. No. Mm -mm. If it's not medicinal, I shouldn't be entertaining it. You can't be doing it because everybody else doing it. Why? Let's see. How does this work with kingdom? I better find a scripture that goes with it. Y'all still there? So when he comes along or she comes along, I'm like, baby, I love you. Do you love Jesus? It ain't about you loving me. Do you love Jesus? Because if you don't love Jesus more than you love me, you got to keep stepping. Because you ain't going to do nothing but bring trouble to me. You're going to try and raise up my old man, and I can't have that. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. See, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Y'all be trying to hide all that stuff. But you know I'm telling the truth. So when you walk in kingdom, then God begins to walk with you in the authority that he has laid upon you. Okay? So when obedience comes out, then God begins to use you to begin to get things done. When it comes to you walking into what the Holy Spirit said, then it's going to happen. So this morning, someone said, there's tar in the ear. Deacon Andy, I, some, some like, somebody's got an ear problem. He went to pray for somebody, all right, out of obedience. I expect that. But the person who he prayed for, you all you got to do is receive it. No, I'm already healed. You don't have to keep going back. Oh, God, I need you to heal me. No, you already got the healing. There was a word that came forward, and there's power in the word of God that know that the healing was already there. Amen. Now all we do is got to receive it, download it, and say, oh, no, air, you got to pay attention now. Why? He said everything, everything will bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. Things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth. Now, whatever's locking it up, it's got to open it up. You can't stay here, devil. Are y'all with me today? It's important that you understand the power of walking in the authority of God. But you can't get this authority if you don't walk in your identity. You got to know grace is coming to you. You can't. Listen, identity says I can't pout. Identity says I have to w have a smile. Identity says I have to walk with forgiveness. Yeah. Authority says I can't murmur. Mm -hmm. I can't talk against people. I can't do the things the wrong way with my mouth. Identity says I got to put it where it needs to be. Are y'all there? Scripture, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength. That word strength is dunamis. It means power or authority. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God. How often? Come on. Has been what? Listen, that don't happen in an instance just like that. It happens in intervals. You literally are going to see the enemy just dropping off. Why? Because you're conquering things. You're conquering things. You're con Every generation gets to conquer something. So your authority will continue to follow the identity that God has given, given you. And you have to be careful to walk in the authority that God has given you. All right? If you don't walk in that authority, what happens is you begin to create liabilities in your life. You open doors that you can't close. You don't want to create liabilities. You want to create assets. Are you there? We go out and we spend all this money for these holidays and everything. That's the only thing I don't hate about this season. We spend all this money. We go in debt. We go into deep debt. Can't pay the debt off. Don't know what to do with it. And then we keep going farther and further and further in debt. Listen. Oh, no, man. Okay. And you, you want somebody to forgive your debt. You created it. You better get the faith to get a miracle to pay it. 
Okay, and God will remove it, but you got to walk in your identity. Are you with me today? God will extinguish all your bills that they will forgot what your debt was. But you can't come to the table and say, oh, God's going to take care of my debt. He's going to take care of my debt. And you keep creating debt. I mean, you know, it doesn't work like that. You got to get to the place where you understand the power and the authority of walking in the word. Okay, and a lot of us, we get to that, that place where, okay, we're going to mellow out a little bit, and we, we don't have to worry about that. But authority comes by you putting the word down inside of you. The Bible says it has to be engrafted. It's written on you. No, nope. this is where we are. Let me show you. John chapter 18, verse 33. Then Pilate entered um, the Praetorium Again called Jesus and said to him, are you king of the Jews? I like this. Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Man, this is good. Now, you usually don't answer a question with a question, but how many know he's king of kings? He can do that. Verse 35. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Now, I can't read this in the Greek and how it's written. But basically, Pilate responded to him based on the authority he stood in. He didn't come with his head down. He came like he was royal. And he questioned Pilate based on a government office. Are you saying this or did somebody tell you this? Are y'all with me? Verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. That's why we don't have to. So that I should not be delivered to the Jews but now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly, in other words, yes, that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth do what? Do what? Right. So when the voice comes, the word comes out. The word comes. When the word comes, then that's when the power and the anointing begins to touch things. If you're saying what the Holy Spirit is saying, how many of you know you're going to go somewhere? That is called authority. You literally walk in that authority. And never once did Jesus offend Pilate because he, Pilate was an authority. He would not offend him. All right? And that's what we don't learn. We have children today. They don't care who. And this is what we hear a lot, particularly in schools or where kids are. And not just from the kids, but all the way up to 20-something. You ain't my mom. You ain't my daddy. When you see someone who is elder, how many of you know we respect them as such? Are y'all with me? Okay. We, and, and then we have parents who say, did you, did you say something to my kid? Let me hear you say it to me too. You talk about ignorance on top of ignorance. In my day, which was in Jesus' day too, <laughs> Not, not that I go back that far. But if I said something wrong and my mama got wind of me saying something wrong, she ain't going to correct somebody who corrected me. She going to correct me again. Are you there? Are you, if, if the teacher said, I, well, back in my day, I had to pound him a couple times. They were allowed to do that then. Okay. Paddles, rulers, all kinds of stuff. My, my, my mama would come to the table and she'd be like, what did he do? And why did you? Okay, she'll make sure that you were correcting what you were doing. 
But then when you got home, you got it again. Because there was a respect for the authority that stood in front of us. Are y'all with me today? So here Jesus says, you are, you are in my kingdom when you hear my voice and you obey it. You don't have to tell anybody that you're walking under your own anointing. You tell them you're walking under the anointing of Jesus Christ. Everybody follow me. Y'all know the scripture that Apostle gave earlier. She gave it out of Hebrews chapter 5, 8, where the scripture tells us, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Nobody was going to, Pilate wasn't listening. He had to suffer some things, but he still was a king. Are y'all with me today? So let me give you the <clears throat> couple final verses so that you can see where I'm going with this. Now, remember I said, who's who in the kingdom? Okay, catch this. Because it's important that you understand the value of your life and how valuable you are to speaking kingdom, walking kingdom, doing kingdom. All right? Speaking kingdom, walking kingdom, doing kingdom. All right? I appreciate the fact that we, we help one another, we take care of one another, we do all of that. But how many of you know you have responsibilities too? And some of us want to grab everything that's free as opposed to being the blessing, okay? Because that's who Jesus is. A king is always giving, not receiving. He's always giving. Hear the word of the Lord, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I'm going to read through it. I'm going to give it to you in a CEV. Can you put that up there for me? You can't put that up there for me? All right. <clears throat> so just hear um, the scriptures, and then we'll have you do the New King James. I ask the glorious Father... And God of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you his spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. The spirit will make you wise and let you understand what it means to know God. My prayer is that light will flood your hearts and that you will understand the hope that was given to you when God chose you. Then you will discover the glorious blessings that will be yours together with all of God's people. I want you to know about the great and mighty power that God has for us followers. It is the same wonderful power he used when he raised Christ from the death and let him sit at his right side in heaven. Raise Christ from the death and let him sit at his right side. Where? In heaven. Okay, y'all hold that. There Christ rules over all forces, authorities, powers, and rulers. He rules over all beings in the world and will rule in the future world as well. Verse 22, God has put all things under the power of Christ, and for the good of the church, he has made him the head of everything. The church is Christ's body and is filled with Christ, who completely fills everything. Are y'all there? Okay. Let me, let me go to verse 2. I'm sorry, chapter 2. Verse 1 of Ephesians, if you could follow along with me in the New King James. In the past, you were dead because you sinned and fought against God. Verse 2, you followed the ways of this world and obeyed the devil. He rules the world and his spirits, I'm sorry, he rules the world and his spirits has power over everyone who doesn't obey God. Y'all still there? Once you were also ruled by the selfish desires of our bodies and minds. We had made God angry, and we were going to be punished like everyone else but God. Was merciful. We were dead because of our sins, but God loved us so much. Tell your neighbor, God loves you so much.
Now you need to tell them, I'm learning how to do that. But God loved us so much <clears throat> that he made us alive with Christ. He made us alive with Christ. And God's wonderful kindness is what saved us. Now look at this. It already said that he had raised Jesus up to sit in heaven at his right hand. But verse 6 of chapter 2 says... God raised us from death to life with Christ Jesus and has given us a place beside Christ in heaven. Are y'all there? You ain't seated in the earth. You're seated in a place of authority. But because you have that authority, you have a responsibility to walk in him and to learn of him and to do what he's called us to do. Are y'all there? You got to walk in him. You got to learn in him. You got to do what he's called you to do. Authority is good. Identity is good. When you're born into the family as a baby, you have identity. You, you are Kevin Nelson, who comes from Clarence Nelson. Yeah, you, you, that's all good. That's all good. But you got to act like who you're supposed to be. When you become a Christian, you are born into the Christian family. But how many know it takes time to come there? Are you there? Lazarus had no authority to walk on his own until the disciples began to take off the grave clothes. He got identity behind that, and then he got his authority behind that. God wants to put you in the same place. Amen? I'm not going to read this last verse. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it. I think it would be a lot to go into. But here's where I am for all of you. In this new year that's coming, know who you are. Don't struggle. Some of us struggle. Get that word in front of you. If there is a struggle, let it be that I have to wake up and read my Bible. Let that be your struggle. Get that word inside of you. Say, no, this is what Jesus says. When the Holy Spirit gives you something, hold to the word of God. He will speak. You are, he says, my sheep know my voice. They hear me. You will hear his voice if you're putting that word down inside of you. And as you put that word inside of you, it'll cause you to miss every mishap. Are you there? You won't have any mishaps. But you will have truth reigning in your life. You mean every dream that I've ever dreamed is going to come alive? Yes, it'll come alive. You'll see it move forward. You'll see grace fall upon you. All you have to do is listen to the Holy Spirit. We're too busy trying to sit around praying about this, praying about that. Oh, and then we start worrying and worrying and worrying. When we ought to hand, give it to God and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Tell me what to do. And as you walk out the authority of what he told you, you'll see grace just pour down on you. It'll pour down on you. You'll constantly get the word. You'll constantly walk in the word. You'll constantly know the word. Going to church doesn't mean we're going to heaven. Going to church says, I'm getting the word so I can be victorious in earth. That's the beginning. I want to be victorious here before I get anywhere else. When pain comes into your body, how many of you know pain doesn't belong in your body? Don't dismiss it. Some of us, we go, you know, you devil, you know, you just get up out of here. Blah, 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 blah. Ask God, why is the pain there? Okay? You've been doing this wrong. You've been doing that wrong. I just need you to change what you've been doing. We're going to get all these tests, doing this and doing that. Pastor Denise had pain in her chest. Her heart was... Rhythmic, boom, 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 crazy rhythm. She asked God, Lord, what is this? Instead of we spending all the money that we have to spend on health insurance and all the rest of that, what is this? He said, you're drinking too much coffee. She stopped drinking the coffee. The pain went away. Whoa, the voice of the Lord took pain out the body. That's simple. 
She still drinks coffee, but coffee's not a sin. I want you to know that. <clears throat> are are y'all there? But you got to understand to, you have a voice that you have to obey. When you obey the voice, the kingdom will come to you. When God says, don't spend that, don't buy that, what does that mean? Listen, he's not speaking in tongues, y'all. When, when he say, don't go down that road, what does that mean? When he says, uh, he may not say this to you, he does say it to me, okay? When he says, shh, what does that mean? Hold your peace. Let me handle this. I don't need you to deal with it. Let me handle it. And if, if you're married and you're male, I'm talking to television right now. <laughs> you have to learn to shh and give them opportunity to get it out because they have three times more words than you do, sometimes 10. So you, you just got to rest. Now, if I'm telling the truth, just say amen. amen. And sometimes we don't have the peace to let that happen. And you have to let them get it out. We do the same with our children. We tell them, hush. You know, when kids need to get it out, they need to talk a little bit. Are, are y'all with me today? I'm teaching y'all. I'm sorry. You sit with family. You begin to learn some things. You begin to, and, and if you give them room, they'll, they'll literally grow out of the family. In other words, they'll take you, the family into new levels. But you got to give them room to be expressive to the voice of God. That's when the family begins to grow. That's when the church begins to grow. When you begin to get the voice of God and you begin to activate the voice of God. If God says, it's time for you to leave that job. If God says, it's time for you to do this, then it's time. You don't get it ahead of time. You don't do it because you want to do it. You better do it because he wants you to do it. Otherwise, it's not going to survive. Are y'all with me today? It's the voice. So who's who in the kingdom of God? Those who hear his voice and obey. Come on, give him praise today. All right, come on, TV. Oh, come, let us adore him. All right. So, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessings today. We thank you that we're part of the kingdom of God. We thank you that we've been called to rule. We've been called to reign. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us truth beyond measure. We thank you that your anointing flows with us. Oh, God, you've put scripture down inside of us. It's been engrafted on our hearts that we know the truth. And your word says, we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. So, Father, we stand on your truth. We stand in the place that you've called us to stand. And I thank you, Lord, that as we continue to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that authority will increase as your word is already declared. In the name of Jesus, all of God's people said amen.